This may seem like a strange opening shot, but this is an important piece of the infrastructure required for home microgreens production. I've laid the basic components out here on a table, which I'm going to overview in this video on infrastructure, and then go over how all these fit into our basic system, which is on the shelving unit here. So what we're going to do is review the overall positioning of our shelf, we're going to look at the individual pieces of infrastructure, I gave you a look and then we're going to the, look at the uh, economics the and sourcing of, of these uh, items. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the space and just how everything fits together. So here we are in my kitchen, with my uh, kitchen table removed, so I can give you a good visual here. And first I want to talk about the space. So I live in a, you know, an average size apartment in Vancouver, so I have a very urban lifestyle. And so that was a big consideration for me in terms of how I'm going to integrate this system into my home. In the past, uh, when I do projects like this, I often really want it to stand out. So when people come over, you know, my microgreens production or whatever it is I'm doing as a project kind of stands out and you're like, oh, you know, it, it becomes the center of attention. And I'm really, in this case, what I'm trying to do is have the system blend in a little more. And once it's all, the lights are on and things are full, it's definitely going to stand out. But what I wanted it to do was just to become a part of my apartment, not something that stands out. So the space I had here was great because there was this, actually this sort of empty space in my kitchen that uh, I did, wasn't quite sure what to do with. Um, I spent a lot of time here cooking and so my cutting boards and stuff are here. And so when I went uh, through the process of, of setting up this system, this was a very obvious space. And so the first thing I needed to do was find a shelving unit that fit into the space. So there's a lot of ways you can go about shelving. Uh, the sort of bakers or wire metal shelves you often see, which are very common in food service uh, supply stores or even Home Depot, places like that. They're pretty good. Uh, I happen to come across one of these sort of prefabricated uh, mini greenhouses. Now usually this isn't the sort of thing I would buy, but it was cost effective. It was the exact um, width and height of what I needed, and, and it's easy to procure. This is something I got at Home Depot, so it's not a super specialized uh, product. So, uh, plus this is right by my window, so this is almost an ideal space for this type of setup. I could turn it, and so it was facing in and getting much more of the natural light, but then I'm not making uh, the best use of the space, and then it's starting to get a little invasive there. It's starting to take over the space a bit. So I lose a little bit of natural light access in the back of the trays, uh, but I think in general I'm trying to weigh all the different things uh, against each other. So the general layout here, this is a great system because it's got four shelves which allow me to have both my production system um, and my supplies all together. So it basically consists of the shelving unit, the lights, and what I've done is I've, I'm using two foot ballasts, uh, so we're, we're, we're a two foot wide shelf here with two lights each, and I have one in the front and one in the back. Now you might be tempted to put a single light in the middle, uh, maybe to save money or save energy costs, and the, uh, consider the cost of running these lights is so small I probably won't even notice a, a change in my electrical bill. Uh, the, the advantage you get from the better distribution of light from having uh, these two will give you way more productivity than any money you'll save in even the medium run. These uh, particular lights needed to be wired in, so they are wired in here. I have a box here and then for another one, and then an uh, electrical cord coming out to uh, a power bar, and the power bar is plugged into the wall through a timer. So basically these lights are going to come on and off by themselves every single day. I don't have to control my lighting in any way. Now this sort of wiring may be beyond what your capacity is. And, and I did this because this is the light type of light unit I wanted and it's what I could find available. You can find units like this that have the plug built in, so take a look for that. So this is one of those things where you need to determine what you can do with, with your skill set. So uh, I decided to wire these in because I couldn't find a plug-in type that I really liked, that I thought would fit the system. So that's a consideration there. If you can't do the wiring, maybe somebody can do it for you. Uh, I'll make a, another little note is, what I've kind of done up here is I've put a lot of my personal stuff up here. Uh, and so instead of having this empty space, what I've done is I've tried to fill that with things 
Uh, I have a few plants that go up there that I just moved for the sake of this video, um, but I'm trying to fill that space with things to once again sort of camouflage it and make it uh, fit in a bit. This top shelf is going to be our growing shelf. So once trays are growing, they're going to happen here. This here is our germination shelf. So this is where uh, trays will germinate. Here we have some storage space, and this is storage space for seeds down here. So it's a very simple setup. The only thing that isn't included in this space is uh, like a big bowl for soaking uh, my seeds, which I'll just use any regular bowl I have, uh, and my soil. My soil I'm keeping outside of my balcony. So I'm just going to go through some of the components and I'm going to kind of put them back into the system here so you can uh, see what they uh, look like and how they fit in. So the first thing is our growing trays. Now these, these are trays I actually got from the food peddlers here, they're not mine. Uh, what I have are similar trays, they're a, it's a 10 by 20 tray, one inch deep. And this, is the, this tray is the uh, one available online from Bootstrap Farmer. And the reason I like these ones from Bootstrap Farmer is they're very, very solid. They're very, very strong trays. I believe they come with a two-year warranty. Uh, and I've, I've gone with a lot of, I've worked with a lot of different trays over the years. These are, are built out of solid plastic and they're really going to last. I also think they look a little better because of the higher quality of plastic. So once again, when this is in my home, these, these kind of trays, they're, they're just, you know, they're used, they're, they're worn. And, and, and these trays don't really have that. So these are probably going to last forever in this type of system. In a, in a more commercial system, they may break down a little quicker, but, but I'll probably never have to buy trays again. I have 10 trays here, and to do two trays twice a week, so I can do four trays in production a week in this system, believe it or not, 10 trays is almost the exact amount. Because I'll have some growing, some germinating, some used for covering the crop, and then a few extra. So it, it should work out quite perfectly with 10 trays. So these guys sit here. I have another type of tray, and these ones are, it's a combination. So these are just cell packs you see all the time in a nursery, where you can fill them with individual cells for plants, and, and uh, a 10 by 20, 2 or 2 and a half inch deep uh, mother tray, I think they're called, and this sits in here. Now this might seem like an interesting addition, but the reason I have this is because when my microgreens or wheatgrass start growing, they're quite small, and I actually want them as close to the light as can be. So what I would do is I would slide this under, I would put the growing tray on top, and then when the tray gets taller, I can take this out. Now often you would have lights that move up and down, uh, and this would be considered a little bit more archaic, but it's very, very easy. You know, this stuff I actually got for free from a, from a, from a nursery that's just sort of throwaway stuff. So it makes the moving of things really, really easy. So not everything needs to be super automated and have all these moving systems. If you need things to be closer to the light, just put something under them that puts them closer to the light. It's very simple. So I have two of those. So these just sit uh, right here quite simply. Now for watering, uh, this is a question I think a lot of people have, is, is how am I going to water without getting water all over the place? Uh, now you can do that uh, overhead, uh, but for this system we're going to bottom water. And what I'm using here is actually, this is actually a boot tray. So you can get this from Home Depot as well, or similar stores. So this is something you'd put at your front door to put your boots and shoes on. Um, for you, those of you that live in colder climates, I'm sure you've put your winter boots on these things many times. Watch the snow melt and, and fill in these little uh, cells here. So these, this basically uh, will get filled with water and then you place the tray in it. The tray will absorb the water uh, and, and take in water that way. So it's a very easy system. And these, when they're not in use, I actually still store them right under a growing tray. This one comes out a little bit, which I'm not very pleased with. Um, I found one a bit shorter, but it still works in the system here. So this, this is actually its storage space, and then when I use it, I can just do one at a time because these two trays don't fit across here. So it's just a little logistical thing that we'll get into when we start talking about production. So I mentioned germination. You know, the crops go through kind of three stages. There's the, the soaking the seed to induce germination. There's the germination stage on the soil itself, and then there's the growing stage where it's starting to green up. So during the germination stage, one of the most important things, which we will cover in production, is putting pressure on top of the tray. Um, so when they're germinating, you put another tray on top, you put pressure on that, and it really helps germination. I won't get into that too much. 
So to do that, I have these, uh, it's, I think it's a 10 by 15 or so, or 8 by 15 uh, concrete block, also from Home Depot. And I just have the perfect sized cafeteria tray that I keep those on as well. So I have two of these, so I can be germinating two trays at a time. Uh, and at $3 a piece, this isn't a, a huge investment. These each weigh 15 pounds. So to reiterate that, this is what's going to go on a tray uh, when it's germinating. So this just slides right in here as well. So the next thing I have for my system is my wheatgrass uh, press. So I'm growing wheatgrass as well as microgreens. So I just have one of my bootstrap farmer trays that I keep this stuff in. Uh, I often juice my wheatgrass with apple, so I just have a couple uh, extra bowls here that I cut the apple up into. And then the scoop I have here, which I keep with this, is what I'm going to use to scoop up my seeds to measure them when I'm doing my germination. This just goes right here. I like having this down here uh, underneath this. Often there's a little bits of soil that will fall down, and so having something between those means I'm not wiping soil off that wheatgrass juicer every time I use it. So down to the bottom here is where I'm storing my seed. I have two types of seed right now. This is actually a spelt, uh, and then here I have some sunflower. And I've got these, uh, they come in bags, but I've got them in their own uh, totes here. And these totes fit literally to the half inch right in the shelf here. So I have space at the bottom for these guys. And so as you can see, I've got everything on hand that I need for my production here. So the one thing, sorry, that I don't have on hand is my soil. The soil I keep outside, and I've got a little table out there so I can prep my trays with soil um, and, and keep that mess outside. I could also do that on my kitchen table and wipe and sweep afterwards. I've done that in the past and I actually find it quite easy. Uh, this will be more appealing in uh, mid-January or so when it's very cold and very wet outside. Uh, though I, I do have an undercover space to do that. So this is probably going to be the biggest logistical challenge for a lot of people is where to prep your trays with soil. Uh, if you have a bit of an aversion to soil in your kitchen, well this probably isn't the system for you anyway, so get over that. So I think some of you might be looking at this. Uh, I think I, I said in the introductory video that the, the whole setup here costs about $700. And some of you probably think you can do that uh, a little less expensively than that. But uh, things do add up. You know, we look at the, you know, the trays at $5 a piece, you know, our watering trays. I get two of those at $10 a piece. We've got our ballasts and our bulbs, which run to about $40 each. Uh, our power bar, our timer. Um, the shelving unit itself, and then we get into the seeds. I have $100 worth of seeds and about $120 worth of soil. Our, our wheatgrass juicer is $80. So you can see things sort of over time, they just, they, they sort of nickel and dime you until you've got, um, you know, you've, you've spent quite a little bit on, on your infrastructure. Um, however, most of this stuff we're not going to have to buy again. You know, the bulbs will last me several years, the, the ballasts will last pretty much forever, the trays will last a long time. The seeds I'm replenishing, uh, but I've got enough seed here to do a tray of each of these every week, uh, or two trays a, a week, I believe. Um, the wheatgrass juicer will last a long time. So you're looking at that investment in year one, and if you're doing two trays a week, you can produce over $3,000 worth of product. In year two, you're not buying any of this stuff again. You're only buying the seeds and the soil from there on out. And so that's when you really start to see the savings is when you can really um, get longevity out of this and keep a system like this going. So what we're going to do now is that I've got a spreadsheet. It's not as exciting as uh, staring at wheatgrass in the background and, 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 uh, and, and being more live action. But it's a good chance to just take a look over those things and see how those things add up uh, and get a sense of what the production looks like and uh, the costs around it. Having looked at the uh, physical infrastructure and the different components, let's now take a closer look at uh, what this looks like economically. So what I've done is I've put a list here together of, of all the components. So these are actual numbers as, as I put things together. And you can see our total cost here up at the top is $755. So this is proof in, in you know, many ways that this awarding and the costs are going to look like. So let's, let's just take a look through this and so you get a better sense of things. So starting with the greenhouse, you know, I got this one on for about $40 or so. You could get more sturdy different types of shelving. They're definitely going to cost you more, uh, but this is a good start. 
light fixtures here were uh, 33 bucks each, so a little more than I had, had said in the video there. And then the bulbs as well. The bulbs, I ended up getting six bulbs, um, so I have a couple of extras. I ended up being about $34. And I'll actually mention now, actually, that those bulbs never showed up. Uh, and I had to find another source, which cost me close to $50. So um, I'll end up having to update that. Cost me about $30 for the wiring, $11 for the power bar, $17 for the outlet timer. Um, I bought some zip ties for about $5.90 so I could actually zip tie the, um, the power bar to the greenhouse up top there. You may have something else and obviously I can use these elsewhere. So that $5.90 cost actually goes into other projects as well. The watering trays, uh, the boot racks were about $8.70 each. Here you can see the seeds with shipping end up being about $120, so that's definitely something that adds up, as well as the heavy-duty growing trays at $47. The weights are a minor cost. The soil here, I just want to comment on. You can see I've put in that I have five of these, and I've actually only bought one at this point, but over the course of a year I'm going to need uh, five of those. So that's the value I put in here. If I move this to one, it, it takes this number down to $626, and that's the amount of money I'm spending to get started. So $626 gets me started, $755 gets me through the year. Um, I have got a, a couple of Rubbermaid totes where I use to store my soil and the compost that gets created. I put down $30 for a harvest knife. Um, it's really nice to have a nice sharp knife to cut your uh, product with. You can use scissors, but they won't store as well. We'll get into that. Uh, I just put down five bucks for a couple worth of a couple of containers for soaking. A hull sieve. So if you're doing sunflower, you're going to need to pick off the hulls, and you can get a small sieve to do that. We'll get into that later. Here you can see I've got the wheatgrass juicer listed at $78 and the measuring cup at $559. So all this, this adds up to $755. So you can see as you look at that, you're like, oh, okay. So I'm going to have to put money out. What you can also do is do this in stages. Um, so once again, let's say I just buy um, one thing of soil to start with. And let's just say uh, I'm just going to do, I just want, I'm not going to grow wheatgrass. I'm just going to do sunflower. So I'm just buying that one. And you know what? I'm just going to buy one watering tray because I just, you know, the system... Is going to work better that way. It's I can do it with one at a time. Um, I want to be more accurate here with my timer. So in terms of 590, you know, I'm probably actually spending 25 cents on the actual zip ties that are going there. Um, this one I do need to change. I'm going to put that up to 50 again to be more accurate. Um, and then you're going to be like, you know, I've got a shelf I can do this on. You know, so I, I don't actually need that. So you can see as we do this, and, and since you're not doing wheatgrass, you're going to take this juicer out of there, right? You've already got a measuring cup. You've already got containers to soak. And you've already got a knife or scissors. And you've already got a sieve you can use. Um, you've got some old totes you can use. You know, you only need one seed storage container because you're only doing uh, the one. Um, so you can see right away, now I've taken the cost down to $362. So... You can see there's ways to do this more inexpensively and you can spend that money over time. What I find happens and why I put all these costs in is because generally uh, what, what I found is, is I like to separate my stuff and my production stuff. And so I know after a while I like to have a specific measuring cup and I like to have specific things for this production system. So this is basically laid out to show you what the cost from scratch would be. So that's a good overview of pricing and, and just so you get a sense of that. You can see I have some links in here so you can see some of the links to the actual products that I'm using. Uh, some of these things are so universal um, that, that I, I don't have links in there or, or any specific preference. So just a little note, um, and I'll get into this more in the production side, but what I do here is, I, is I, I, I'm breaking things down um, so I get a better sense of what, what costs look like. So with the sunflower, for example, it cost me $74 to, to ship it and, and buy it, and uh, that's uh, basically for 10 kilograms. And so I know the, the weight of seed per volume for a bunch of different volumes. So here I basically got a range of, like, what will it cost me per, per tray uh, in seed to sow? And it's going to depend on what my volume of seed is I use. 
Now I've got a range here from sort of 200 milliliters per tray to 450. We're probably in this 350 to 400 uh, range. You can see here I've put in 400. And so within this, this is going to tell me uh, basically how many um, sewings per bag I can get. Okay, so from if I do uh, 400 milliliters, I'm going to get 171 uh, grams per sewing, and I get 58 sewings per bag. So even though I put 100 sewings per year, I'm going to move this down to 50. Um, move this back to 50 as well. So a sewing is going to cost me $1.28 in seed. My soil, which I calculated elsewhere, is $1.50. So $2.78 is what uh, a tray costs me to sew not taking into consideration the infrastructure costs. If I do $50 a year, my 50 sowings a year, my seed cost is going to be $64. My soil cost is going to be about $75. So $138 uh, per year for sowing. Now I'm valuing a tray of sunflower at about $18, which is sort of around the retail price range. And if I was to look at it on a per weight range, it's probably closer to $30 per tray. But at $18 a tray, that's $900 worth of product I'm creating. So I'm saving $761 if I'm a regular buyer. I'm producing $900 in product, it only costs me $138 to do that. So you get a sense right away of, of the value of doing that investment up front if you're gonna do this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna go into this stuff in more detail on the economic side, uh, but I just wanted to give you an overview to give a sense of how this starts to tie into uh, the economics. So that's the, the end of the infrastructure piece. Next thing is we're going to start looking a little more at the economics and break some of this stuff down a little bit more.